So welcome back. What we are going to do today is we are going to be working on our March bulletin board for March's reading month. So what you see in front of you is a big old Google screen. So I'm going to go to the little nine patch. I'm going to click the nine patch. I'm going to go down to Google Classroom. I'm going to click uh, into 2021, 2022. I'm going to classwork. I just assigned under the March planner. Uh, mm, I want to move that down. Hang on. Uh, book cover for March's reading month. So you're going to click on book cover for March's reading month. And you're going to click on the Google Doc. I set the Google Doc up so that everybody can use the same Google Doc. It might cause a little bit of hiccups, but you're just going to have to be patient because it's a lot easier for me to have one Google Doc to pull stuff from than multiple Google Docs to pull stuff from. Does that make sense? <clears throat> now that I'm into the book covers for March's reading month, I'm going to go to my new tab. In my new tab, I am going to search. I'm not, I don't know which book I will pick. Honestly, if I do pick one. Um... It's just so hard. You know, maybe I will pick Heidi. Heidi's one of my favorite ones when I was reading. Heidi. I do. That was one of the ones I bought when I... Uh, book. Um, cover. Okay, so here's a bunch of Heidi book covers. Um... And let's see, which one do I like? Kind of like this one because it kind of looks like what it is. Do you know what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do, and we've <clears throat> talked about how to snip, right? So on your Chromebook, it's a little bit different, um, but you're going to snip. And then when you snip, you are going to capture your thing. Now mine will automatically mine will automatically copy it. You will have to push a control C for copy. Then I'm gonna go back into book covers for March's reading month. Once I get in there, make sure nobody else is dinking around in there because I don't want you to do something when somebody else is doing something. And I'm going to put control V. Once I post what post my picture, um, I want you to say, you know what? Let me do something a little bit different. Hang on just a sec. So what I did was I set up a table so that this way you can find a spot that's not being used. And then you're going to post your... Uh, paste your picture in there. Now what I want you to do though is once you've got your picture in there I want you to type this is whoever's book. Right? Your name. So that's my book. So then the next person's going to do this. You might want to go in before you decide to post. You might want to type and like do an end like enter, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then you can post your, but you know, you can either do it above or below, but make sure it's in the same box as your book. Does that make sense? Um, how many kids? I need 28 spots. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, perfect, 28. But I will add one more row, and then everybody for sure will have a spot. Now, um, and the brilliance is when you get to this point of the game, um, and then I can just reformat the, the book however big I want it to be, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then what I will do is I will print these out at home, figure out about how approximately the size we want them to be, right, right? And then I'll print them out at home, and then I'll print them on cardstock so they'll be in color when they go up on your board. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so it, so any is always a school appropriate any, but yes, it could be any book that you want. 
It could be a book you're reading right now. It could be, but I want you to think about books that you love, right? Have I read Heidi in years? No, but do I still love this book? Yes. Could I have picked Anne of Green Gables? Yes. Now, here's the scoop. If you go to post a picture in there, and there are like two other people that have already picked a particular book, do I want you to pick that same book? No, because I don't really want a bunch of the same book out there because then it's going to look like y'all read the same thing. Now, do I care if it's a picture book? No. If you have a favorite picture book and you want to put a favorite picture book on there, I am game with that. Okay? So, that's job number one. Now, once you have done it, you don't have to share it with me because it's already my doc, right? So, that's job number one. When you get done with that, um, so when you get done with that, then you're going to work on, let me see. So this, I really need this done by today because then what I can do is I can go home and I can print them out and then, um, I might be able to con my mom into cutting them out so you don't have to cut them out tomorrow. No promises, but maybe. Now, realizing, is a book just the front cover? No. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to make the spine, which is the back side of the book. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And you will need to do a back side of the book, depending on how you have it on your little fish friend. All right, so now that I've done this part, so my book's in there, so I don't have to worry about that part anymore. So then the next part I'm going to do is this so the other day we talked a little bit about um, drawing we practiced drawing a couple different times we didn't get any further than that so here are my couple simple fish now what I want you to think about is this do you always see the fish all going the same direction no so some of the fish are gonna need to go this way and some of the fish are gonna need to go that way now we practice drawing a simple fish. Now if you look at the simple fish, what do you have in the simple fish? You have a circle. You have a curvy line. You have, it looks almost like an upside down C or something like that. And then we drew, to draw this we drew, remember we drew a line, line from here to here. We drew a line from here to here and then we drew a line to connect it. And then this is an upside down C. And then these are like two teardrops, right? We gave them cute little kissy lips, which is a backwards three. We drew a circle, a bigger, small, like a small, bigger circle on top, a smaller circle on the bottom. We colored in the background. Now, can you do a simple fish like this? Absolutely. If you want to do a more complex fish, can you do a more complex fish? Absolutely. Just look, just like the illustrator showed you yesterday, look for the simple basic shapes in there, right? This was an oval, right? Now, when you're drawing, you want to make sure that you draw them with a pencil. Because the brilliance of a pencil is you can erase it. Now, having said all of that, um, if you want to... You want to use a marker to trace over it to give them bold lines you can do that um, can you color with marker sure um, but what I want you to know is this so if I trace this da, 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 I can trace my whole little fish if I want do your best coloring job let's pretend I've done my best coloring job and I see these little wavy lines right here oh I probably should color them in at least a little bit so you can kind of see like so maybe like I do a blue background here and I got those wavy lines and I don't necessarily want to trace over those wavy lines even though I made those wavy lines yesterday and we have um, obviously you're not coloring like Miss Richardson I'm just trying to do it quick so um I do have some glitter glue here um, once it's gone it's gone so please use it sparingly, which means don't only do a little bit of it so that other people can use it if they want some glitter glue. 
the the you know the I'm thinking of the fish that has had all like what was it rainbow fish right had all the scales were rainbowy and then he gave one rainbow scale to everybody you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. now so let's say I want to do some 3d on my little fish and I think this is I'm gonna tell you right now this glue is really hard to get out not gonna lie um tacky glue is the bomb diggity you are not gonna do this if your glue is not coming out you can come to me and I can do this now you should hear a suction noise or see glue coming out of it this as slow as molasses glue that means it goes slowly it's super thick and the stuff sticks to it really well and it's wanting to make me a liar I'm not a liar there it comes my holes just not big enough so if you are the other option is because we were gifted some yarn we have yarn that you can do to make it a texture now some of the yarn is just regular yarn and some of the yarn is oh for the love of pete's sakes what that's what i'm doing I was just gonna model it so you see what you could do with it. I'm not modeling glitter glue because y'all have used glitter glue before, right? No. Oh, geez. Will you get me a bottle of glitter glue, please? Oh, this glue, I'm telling you what. It's coming. It's just so slow. Thank you. That stuff white. Yeah, it's just super thick. So it takes... Usually when I set it, I don't set it upright if I know I'm going to use it. Like, So if you get done using yours, you can leave it like that. Okay. And then it's a lot closer to pouring out than... All right, while I wait for the glue to run down, I'll show you glitter glue. Maybe. I am just not having a good day today with glitter glue and glue glue. All right, so glitter glue is kind of cool because it's got glitter in the glue. It is sticky, you are right. Gosh. All Friday. All right, so let's say I colored it. You're going to color it before you're putting glitter or anything else on there. And then let's say I'm like, oh, I really want my little fish to have red lips. I want red sparkly lips. So here's my little fish. There's red sparkly lips. Okay, so if you'd rather do like lines, you can do lines or whatever, but what I have is what I have. Just make sure that your friends, if they want to use it too, get to use it too, okay? Can we, can we move around now? I'm not done talking yet. Okay. All right, so hopefully one of my glues decided to be cooperative. It's almost there. Okay, well, we're going to have some creative fish up there. What I do want you to think about is, you know, make sure it's obviously school appropriate. Okay, 
apparently third, but blue bottle's the charm. So I would really carefully do the, the lines that I wanted to do. It is a giant blue bottle, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so there's my little stripes. Again, put it on the side because then it doesn't usually dribble out, but it'll stay where it needs to go. Um, I'm probably not going to manipulate this whole thing because it's going to be a pain in the tush. So I'm just going to cut a little piece and then I can manipulate it that way. So I want it to go this way or it's not going to do a lot of wiggles. I might have to lay it down and then wiggle. And then once I get to the bottom of it, I can cut it and go again. Yes and no. Like, it dries faster than Elmer's would with yarn. Like, Elmer's glue. But it's not going to be like a super go speedy Gonzalez kind of thing. So, it, I mean, you know, the literally the glue... Literally the gluing needs to be your last job, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you need to color it. Um, you might even want to cut it out and then put it over a scrap piece of paper to glue it on. Let's do that. Let's cut it out and then, and then, so then that's that one. And then maybe I'll make the other one white. Um, that's kind of cute, isn't it? So if I had finished my whole fish, at this point of the game, I would have my name on the back of it, right? Yep. Or, um, and, th and then I would just let it sit somewhere safe that it could dry overnight, and then we can pop it up tomorrow. Now, the thing I want you to know is this. The thing I want you to know is this. You're only going to get, I mean, if we're looking at the board out there that we're going to be using, this whole thing is going to be too big, right? Um, so what I probably will do is I probably will give you a half a piece of paper with the understanding that the majority of the people are only going to be able to use about a quarter of it. If, if a couple people want, you know, like, like, oh, I really need, like, a half, the whole half sheet, then that's one thing. But for the most part, uh, we're really going to just need quarter size paper. I'll give you half sheets. You might want to cut your half sheet into quarters so that if you blow the first one, you got a couple others that you can try. So try the front, try the back. Um, until you find a fish thing that you want, and then you can sharp, or I'm probably not going to do sharpie, but you can trace it with a marker if you want to trace it or whatever. So about this size of fish is what we're looking for, about a quarter, a quarter of a paper. You are more than welcome to use it from the beginning to the end of the paper. Um, make sure you put your name on the back side when you're done with your, like, yep, this is what I want, I've got it colored in. Before you glue or uh, glitter glue, make sure you have it done. Does that make sense? You are totally fussy cutting, correct. Yeah, fussy cut means I'm going to cut on the exact lines of my fish. Be or as close to the exact lines. Because you don't want it to look crummy up on the board, right? Yep, go ahead, really quick. We have guppies, we have gormies, we have oxes, we have catfish, and then you can also have goldfish, and then another really popular type of fish is um, cichlids. They're like fish that are really aggressive, very aggressive. Okay, so. I'm 
gonna, I think I gave you the information you need for the video. Um, and I'm gonna tell you the rest of it right now. So we'll talk to our video friends later. Bye.